We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution of the United States of America. In 1787, there was a reason that our leaders chose to establish our nation as the United States of America rather than the United People of America. It's called federalism, which is a system of government in which power is divided between a national government and various regional governments like states. There are many reasons why federalism works so well, and here are just a few. First, we know that the government that is closest to the people is most responsive to their needs and demands. To see this principle in action, all you have to do is look at the gridlock and dysfunction in Washington, D.C. Regardless of how frustrating our local or state government might seem, it doesn't compare to the federal government. Second, federalism allows for the laboratories of democracy. That means that people of each state can set many of their own laws and regulations. This allows for the best practices and ideas and theories to be tested and implemented on a large scale without negatively impacting our nation as a whole. Plus, different people have different priorities. And third, having various levels and branches of government protects the people and our institutions from corruption and tyranny. It's the checks and balances of power that help keep government fair and impartial. One of the changes that significantly altered the balance of power in our nation was when the 17th Amendment was passed. It eliminated state influence over Congress by allowing voters to directly elect senators. And while it may have seemed like a good idea at the time, its end result has been a disaster. This shift in the balance of power has allowed the federal government to place excessive laws, regulations, and unfunded mandates on state governments. And these often go unnoticed by the people because politicians tend to promise a lot without regard for how their promises will be paid for after the election. Another concern that has cropped up lately is this movement to implement a national popular vote. To some, it may not sound like a big deal to let the people vote as one big block for the president, but the reality is that this will once again erode our system of federalism, giving more power to Washington, D.C. The bottom line is that maintaining a proper balance of power is critical for our peace and prosperity and that balance is found in federalism. For more information, please go to my website at ericburleson.net. That's ericburleson.net. Thank you.